Um, you're going to be seeing a study that uh, walleyes for tomorrow in the Long Lake Protection District up in Vilas County uh, Commission. Uh, Ron Brook, Dr. Ron Brook and Fred Benkowski out of the UW-Milwaukee Freshwater Science Department, I guess, um, conducted this study. And what they did is they teamed up with the Mole Lake Band of um, the Ojibwe tribe and they took the carcasses from their spearing operation a couple years ago and used these fish to assess how long the fish was and how old the fish was. And by assessing how old they are, they take what's called the otolith bone out of their head. Um, it's a sensory bone that's in the head on either side of the spine in a fish. And what they do is they pull the, the bone out and they slice it and they stain it and it has growth rings on it just like a tree and you can tell uh, if it's one two or ten year old fish and it is absolutely accurate i mean there is no degradation of age uh, but what they found is um, they the population of fish on long lake um, the males they they had about a little over 300 males that they aged and they found out that the vast majority of the males on Long Lake never make it to 20 inches. They're about, they, the, they grow relatively well up to about 17 inches and then they, they level off um, as their age progresses, they level off at about 17 inches. Besides that, Long Lake has a 18 inch size limit. So anglers are not taking males very often because they've doc documented a fish has to get, a male has to get well over 10 years old. Um, to be legal by our standards. But what they found out was um, the, there's about a 65% male exploitation rate on Long Lake and based upon the fact that anglers cannot take them, uh, the, all of the exploitation is by virtue of tribal spearing. Um, and that is a real issue because they also documented obviously that the vast majority of the fish that were being taken are males and they have a, a male to female racial problem which we found on many lakes across the state and so what a, a, a proposal is whether it'll fly or not is to change the way the tribes allocate their um, bag limit right now uh, say they can take 20 fish. They'll take, uh, they can only take one fish over 20 inches, and typically those are females. So what the result of this is over time, the majority of their exploitation has been for, uh, against the male population, and we're talking, you know, pushing 30 years now. So the Voight decision and Barbara Crabb's decision in court that allowed the tribes to, uh, to take uh, didn't have any implications or any considerations of what the long-term uh, resource issue might be. And what we found now, it has a real issue. And um, there is a way to do, to change this situation, and that would be to allow the tribes to take more fish over 20 inches. And you know, if you're, a tri if you're a tribal member wanting to harvest protein, and that's what they're looking for is, is fish flesh, uh, if you give them the opportunity to harvest, say, five fish over 20 inches, um, they would be more than willing to do so, and then they could, that would mean they could, they would be leaving more males in the water for reproduction. Um, we'll see how this pans out in the future, but, um, the other thing is um, the DNR standard for uh, assessing year classes is to do fall fingerling surveys. And what this study has documented that that is not the most accurate way in the world to document, to document um, fall fingerling survival up until age, you know, five months. Because they typically do it in September, October, and they're spawned in April. And uh, the better way to assess a year class strength would be to do yearlings, which have made it through one winter and they're surviving, in, but it's more difficult to find these fish. So uh, the DNR typically opts for 
uh, using the fall fingerling electrofishing survey. So um, just want to make you aware of this study. Um, look at it, it's about 16 pages. There's some technical aspects on it that are not really too difficult to assess, but nevertheless, uh, it's a very good study and it very well documents um, what's been seen and what's been perceived for many years to be a fact. And now we have a study that actually documents the fact.